Thank you very much and welcome everybody. Uh, thanks for coming to this session. Uh, so uh, does it make sense nowadays to develop new software when so many software packages are around? Does it make uh, sense to uh, develop a new annotation approach nowadays when so much uh, is available already? Well, uh, we thought that it does. And uh, uh, what I will be presenting uh, today is a byproduct of our work on medieval inquisition records and data collection from uh, medieval uh, uh, inquisition protocols. Uh, I'm speaking here on behalf of uh, several colleagues who are not here, uh, but uh, who participated in uh, creating this and making this happen. So uh, the, the uh, overall framework where uh, this was born, as I said, uh, is actually a research project. So I'm a research practitioner. I'm not a software developer, uh, but uh, uh, we, did, uh, uh, we did actually author uh, a software because we uh, quite closely collaborated uh, with a good team of developers in order to make this happen, and we developed the data model uh, behind. And we wanted to uh, kind of uh, combine a close reading uh, with with uh, structured data collection. Uh, and so uh, what we uh, uh, came up with uh, is actually uh, quite, a, quite an intense but rewarding uh, approach to uh, the collection of data from texts. Uh, and it can, be, uh, it can be classified as one of, uh, of, the, of statement based approaches to data collection. Uh, so uh, we collect our data in the form of statements following very closely what our sources say. So it's a, it's a historical project in its, uh, in its uh, 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 overall setting. Uh, and what we are trying to do uh, is to inscribe the best of history within this approach. So uh, we were a little concern about, concerned about uh, just like giving facts, because, uh, I mean, giving facts in an inquisition uh, trial, that's a problematic thing. There are many witnesses who are saying different things, uh, and they are basically, uh, they are basically sometimes disagreeing uh, or talking, uh, talking uh, in a different terms. So we wanted to capture, uh, actually, this uh, textual complexity. Uh, these are uh, uh, the institutes which funded the, the development of this uh, approach and software. Uh, I uh, specifically want to mention Czech Science Foundation, even if it doesn't fund us now, because it was instrumental in starting all this. Uh, this is the team which is behind this currently. And now I'm finally getting to uh, uh, the actual topic of uh, what I will be speaking about today. Okay, so uh, computer-assisted semantic text modeling. Uh, we, we wanted to actually underline uh, that there is some computer assistance to this. Uh, I said that it's manual. It definitely is, uh, but at the same time, uh, there is a lot of computer assistance thanks to the software uh, behind. Um, and uh, uh, as I said, we uh, try to follow very closely what the texts are actually saying and uh, remaining very close to the original, uh, to the original wording. So lexically, we, we really want to follow the original expressions. We deal with a multilingual world. Even if most Inquisition records are in Latin, uh, uh, there, are, there are some which are uh, uh, in Middle High German uh, and Middle English, we simply wanted to devise something which is uh, by its nature multilingual. Uh, and we wanted to use the, uh, the uh, natural language syntax as the basis. So uh, we're not using triples, but we, we're using something like quadruples, uh, uh, which follow a predicate argument structure. So you have the, the predicate, and to, to this you have the subject and the uh, object, and you basically fill in these slots with uh, uh, entities. And these entities are not only persons uh, or groups or um, uh, animals or places, but also, uh, also concepts which were quite important for us uh, in what we are doing because we're dealing a lot with beliefs uh, and uh, uh, also reported speech. So with these chains of statements, so uh, somebody said that uh, somebody else did something bad with the heretics. Uh, so all these statement chains need to be represented. Uh, so it's about reported speech very much. And uh, we want to also remain very contextual, uh, so basically record any piece of information within its original uh, context. And uh, 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 while recording all of this complexity, uh, we want to uh, represent this as structured and analyzable data, analyzable in a quantitative framework or rather a different quantitative frameworks. 
So uh, I will make a bold statement here, and I know that uh, there will be uh, at least 20 people who will question this, and perhaps rightly. Uh, so uh, uh, it's trying to be able to represent anything uh, which the texts say, uh, and it does so uh, at various epistemic levels. So both the textual one, what the text really says, uh, but distinct from that also your interpretation of the text uh, and still on a higher level uh, inferences that you made outside of the text based on either external resources or your domain knowledge. So uh, our buzzword uh, uh, has been uh, to model the source uh, itself, model the text, before you model the research problem or uh, realities uh, that this uh, text is actually conveying, uh, and doing this while preserving the salient features of the text. Uh, so um, I guess that some historians might even regard this as some kind of edition of the text. Uh, it's a text representation uh, which remains quite close to the original. So if you think about Regis, this type of uh, summarized editions, uh, you, might, you might think that uh, it's pretty similar to what we are uh, doing, uh, but producing instantly analyzable, uh, analyzable data. And we're very careful to actually um, represent quite well um, these, uh, this layering of knowledge uh, that is behind our sources. So uh, who is speaking in a given moment? Uh, is it that the text really says this, or is it our interpretation, or uh, is it something external? And uh, uh, so the basis of this is uh, some entity relation model, which you would find in any relational database, for example. Uh, on top of this, we add some uh, elements which are uh, uh, which which extend the model uh, with things which we think matter a lot to historians. One of them is textual order. So in which order the information appears. In Inquisition records, it's uh, it's often an interplay of questions and answers. And not only facts are being mentioned, but also uh, beliefs and hypotheses, such as uh, if the Lord Pope told you to believe this, would you follow his advice? And uh, uh, so this type of conditional things that normally you wouldn't uh, record as facts, but they are important for what we are studying. So we are studying the interactivity at trial uh, and uh, how people adapt. So uh, this is why we actually needed to represent this. Um, and uh, also, uh, we of course needed to uh, be able to separate any piece, uh, to, to trace back any piece of data to the speakers, to where the information uh, comes from. So uh, narrative perspective, uh, if you have a project where narrative perspective uh, matters, where context matters a lot, where order of in, in which information is given matters a lot, and you need to represent, to have this represented as structured data, um, uh, this is the time when you could consider what we are offering here. And actually, this is the moment uh, uh, where for the first time uh, uh, we're kind of publicly advertising this. Uh, so it's, it's in initial stages of development. By initial, I mean uh, since 2019. Okay, so uh, um, the basis of this is some kind of entity relation uh, model, uh, uh, which has uh, two, uh, two entities which are kind of types, uh, actions, which represent the predicates and concepts, which represent nouns, uh, adjectives, uh, pronouns, pronominal phrases, etc., anything else which is not, uh, which is not verbs. And then specific entities uh, of this world. Uh, so statements, resources, persons, groups, objects, events, and the like. So something you would normally expect uh, from uh, uh, any data model that represents uh, uh, texts, historical or otherwise. And we're uh, relating these entities in different ways. Uh, the, the most important thing to say uh, is uh, that uh, all those entities are related within statements which actually are clauses of the text. So we take the text clause by clause and we model these clauses uh, in this subject, verb, object, object structures. Um, uh, and they are are aligned with the text. Uh, so we, we do hope that uh, this, syn this very syntactic uh, approach uh, might also allow uh, some automation in the future, but haven't, uh, haven't yet um, experimented with this. 
So and then we are relating uh, diverse property, uh, uh, these entities with diverse properties, uh, such, uh, such as uh, adjectives uh, and of course adverbs for, for the predicates. So it's really like taking the text uh, or parts of text or things that the, uh, the clauses that are relevant for you uh, one by one and uh, modeling them uh, in this uh, manual way, uh, computer assisted but uh, manual. So here we are going against the current uh, uh, a little bit, um, um, but uh, with, with some uh, NLP side of the project as well. So, um, and uh, uh, what this produces? Well, uh, I have chosen a, an example from Jack London uh, in order uh, not, to, not to threaten you with Latin examples. Um, so, uh, never was there such a dog, said John Thornton one day uh, from the Call of the Wild by Jack London. Um, and this is uh, just uh, really a graphical representation of two statements which are interrelated. So, so actually, the second statement, so, uh, the, the first statement is actually one of the actans or one of the like uh, objects uh, of the of the second clause. So we are relating these statements um, in this way as the tech, as the original sources uh, that we are modeling uh, do. Uh, but on top, we are adding a lot of annotation. So uh, we want to say that this specific dog uh, is identical to Buck uh, previously mentioned, uh, and we also want to know that this this dog is a dog. So uh, relate to the concept of dog and this is related to the concept of animal and so forth and so on and so forth in order to create uh, a large uh, knowledge graph based on a, a quite a dense uh, a network of lexico-semantic relations. Because then we want to know such things uh, uh, as, for example, uh, or, or who were the givers of uh, food to the heretics? Uh, is there any pattern there? Uh, what are the patterns of exchange in medieval religion and so forth? But this is, this is uh, uh, while this is developed in a uh, medieval religion project, uh, it's actually uh, agnostic. It's a very uh, generalistic, uh, thing uh, from which uh, a diverse historical project might uh, benefit. Uh, and uh, we started with we started doing this in spreadsheets. Can you imagine? Um, uh, but this was uh, this was uh, this was something uh, which was almost necessary uh, because we needed to build this up from scratch, uh, really from small bits and pieces from these small structures of uh, predicates and their actants, so subjects and objects, uh, and then uh, adding, of course, the properties of those uh, actants and of those predicates. Uh, and building this up um, and devising this data model uh, that uh, we find uh, is able to capture even this relative complexity of our uh, inquisitional sources uh, uh, where this narrative perspective uh, matters a lot and contextuality uh, and also the uh, exact expression that the people are using in their depositions, uh, which are some kind of recorded police protocols. You might uh, make this comparison with modern day, uh, modern day world. So we started with spreadsheets, and it can still be done with spreadsheets. Just from one point in time, uh, it becomes really impractical in terms of querying and in, in terms of data entry um, and in terms of well, both data in and data out. Uh, and so uh, since the very outset, it was our intention to actually develop some data collection interface. Uh, we do not really do so much uh, the uh, data exploration uh, thing because you have, you have all, all these very nice packages for the visualization of relational data um, uh, in R and Python uh, and um, various user interfaces. So this is more uh, about well structuring the data for further querying and really picking up just the exact data that you need for your research uh, question in a neat uh, and contextual way. So this is how uh, Ink Visitor with a V uh, come, came to being. Uh, it bears the idea of uh, visiting ink written documents, but also uh, uh, that it is born from a project on Inquisition records. Um, and uh, uh, we're launching it uh, uh, just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we have launched this uh, website of Ink Visitor, uh, where you can uh, find the link to the GitHub repository and uh, basic information on the application and the approach, um, uh, which is there 
free to use under a permissive license. So this is just a screenshot of the user interface which shows the two sentences from Jack London's uh, The Call of the Wild that I was showing in a diagram briefly. Um, and uh, um, it's really about uh, uh, relating the entities in a, in a smart way. So uh, you have here the predicate uh, and you have the actants where uh, you see that John Thornton is the subject. Um, and this, uh, this whole s uh, statement, the first statement, um, is, is the object of this saying. Uh, so basically, it, it, it allows you to represent these statement chains, which so often occur not only in literature, but also in um, uh, not only in very literary uh, works, but, but in any kind of um, uh, historical documents or even spoken language. Uh, so, uh, basically what we wanted to achieve is to have each piece of information enveloped in the proper context of these documents and sub-documents um, and have the order represented and have the individual uh, bits and pieces of information uh, just at the right places as the text uh, has it. So you can really recognize this historical bend that we, that we have when, uh, that we had in mind when devising this, um, uh, this data model. Uh, also, some of these things you only need to do once. So, for example, here you can see the word said, um, the, the verb said, um, and already uh, this uh, uh, this verb is actually somehow uh, semanticized. Um, not only itself, it, it's, it's given some semantic relations, uh, such as hypernames or synonyms, um, but also the different uh, slots, the different actan slots are given some rules. So for example, uh, a speaker in our world of Inquisition records, definitely we're not working on surrealistic literature, for example, so here only persons and groups normally speak, and so therefore we we say that entity type, the required entity type um, is a person or group. And uh, once this slot is filled in, and it must be filled in, it doesn't allow an empty uh, slot uh, in this case, uh, this person or group uh, which is speaking is speaker. And in turn, speaker uh, is related uh, in a broader um, uh, in, a, in, a, in a broader taxonomy of what it is. So you can see here that if we want to know uh, what's happening with animals in Arthurian romances or what's happening, uh, what's happening with uh, uh, giving things to the heretics, uh, we are able to find it through, through, this, conceptual, through this conceptual hierarchy. Um, a word about technologies uh, that we are using. Uh, Inquisitor is exclusively um, uh, based on uh, um, uh, open technologies, open source technologies. Uh, even if we make an exception for some data projections which we find useful, this is not anymore uh, part of Inquisitor per se. However, so Inquisitor is really, uh, really free. But uh, for convenience, we developed uh, some uh, data projection technologies in order to um, make uh, to, to use something that people quite broadly used for relational data, which is Neo4j, uh, where, uh, uh, where we are actually projecting our data. We, we have transformation scripts uh, which, uh, which produce this. Now, the, the important thing is actually the data model behind, uh, because it took us just one week, literally, to make this Neo4j uh, projection. Um, and uh, in theory, we are able to uh, make uh, another kinds of transformations, uh, because what counts is not really the uh, technicality uh, but uh, the data model behind, uh, which is adapted to uh, this contextual um, collection of data. And so we're using EverythingDB, which is a uh, uh, JSON document database, uh, but are actually then doing research um, on a graph database because it's uh, so intuitive to a query. And so what this produces is um, uh, this kind of graph uh, for this example, uh, and to avoid some uh, hairballs, uh, I selected this uh, John Thornton uh, example um, um, in Neo4j browser. As I said, we do not rely on this. Uh, we just happen to be using it uh, because it's practical. Thank you. And so uh, I have one minute to uh, uh, just briefly uh, demonstrate uh, what we can do with this. 
Uh, so uh, we are normally studying the uh, uh, relations between concepts and people and diverse types of entities in Inquisition records. So we were interested in which people use some concepts such as believer of heretics, houser of heretics, uh, and supporter of heretics. Um, and so with very easy queries, we were able to uh, find out that from, from the many people in one Inquisition register, just really a couple of those are using these um, concepts. Uh, that many others are referring to those people as um, um, that they have said the same thing as those uh, as those uh, initial couple of people, and also to find some connections between those people, so some regularities which actually back this up. So we were able to find some uh, probable. We, we were able to make some probable guesses, like why exactly these people are uh, are using these uh, inquisitorial uh, terms, while others. <laughs> do not. So, so it's a really thick uh, semantic network uh, where we relate those entities, texts, uh, people, concepts, places um, that we are able uh, to query with this added value of order um, uh, of information, etc. So uh, this is it. Uh, uh, if you like it, please uh, uh, re reach, uh, reach to us and we will be able uh, we will be happy to give you uh, uh, testing access to uh, Inquisitor without you being forced to deploy it on your own server. You can use our sandbox. Thank you very much.